pass that. Um, the first thing I want to do is review the numerical stuff that you measured yesterday about lenses. Um, in particular, there was a question uh, in the, towards the end that asked, based on what you found, what can you say about the relationship between a, a mirror's focal length, where an object is, and then where its image would be formed? How can we relate those? Yes. Isn't it so one over di plus one over do equals one over f? Right. You usually write it like this. So where f is the focal length of the mirror, and remember we found that um, experimentally by saying if we take something that's very very distant and we focus an image of it on the screen that length between the screen and our mirror is the focal length. And we'll see graphically why that is in just a little bit. DI is what we use to uh, measure the distance between the mirror and the image. And DO is the mirror, yeah, the mirror object distance. So the object is the real thing, the physical thing that we are starting with and making an image of. And this tells us a few things about where these will form. For example, um, if we are looking, and so uh, in back you were trying, you had the object at the at about the focal length. Well, let's look and what look at see what happens at, at that. If the object is at the focal length, this is one over f. We have one over f here. So we would have, in that case, special case. We'd have 1 over f equals 1 over d image plus 1 over f again. These two subtract out, so we have 0 is equal to 1 over d image. So where does that image form? One divided by what equals 0? Something. Infinity. So the image there would actually form at infinity, give or take two. Um, and that's why you couldn't get that to focus, because when it's right there, nothing occurs. Let's, so this is if object distance is equal to the focal length. What about if the image distance well, no, let's do this. We actually use this already. If the object distance is equal to infinity, or at least something really big, um, then we take 1 over f is equal to 1 over di plus 1 over do. This, if this is infinity or at least really big, it's practically, that fraction is practically 0. So that means that the image distance is located at the one focal length, which is what we used to characterize this in the first place. We took something not quite at infinity, but at least quite very, very far away in comparison to the focal length. And so we got really close to what that focal length would be, probably within the limitations of our measurement. Um, now, there is something else we could have done with this. And uh, yes? You, you're never going to be able to get an image from it. But techni you know, mathematically, it would work out at infinity, but you're never going to actually be able to observe that, of course. If you took just a tiny, tiny change from that focal length, you could then get it somewhere distant. What about in the case, now, now think back to your first experiment 
so a couple days ago, three days ago, with just holding on to the uh, mirrors and, and using them. What about if the object distance is inside the focal length? So that would be the case where, think, of, uh, think about back to the other day, when you brought the mirror in very close to your eye, what, did, what happened? Your eye got huge! Yeah. And it flipped it too. Um, flipping these images that way, um, actually, no, I think it was upright at that point. Yeah, right? yeah. It was upright at, yeah, yeah, so it flipped it back. Yeah. Um, upright images are uh, associated with virtual images. And here is why. If, you, if we put that into our formula here, 1 over f, um, I'm going to just subtract this from both sides to save us a step is minus 1 over DO is equal to 1 over DI. If our object distance is less than our focal distance, this is less than 0. It's a negative number. So we'd say that the image distance is less than 0. A negative number. That means it's a virtual image. It, occur, it happens behind the mirror. This would be the case for plane mirrors too, which we'll talk about in just a second. But anytime we see that this image distance is negative, that means behind. It's, and that's usually all that it will mean. Um, let's take the case of a plane mirror, so a flat mirror. Focal length here is related to the curvature of the mirror. And ooh, I better look that up because otherwise I'm going to put the two in the wrong place. The focal length twice the radius of curvature, I think. But I want to look it up so I don't tell it backwards like yesterday. Yep. So the focal length here is it's actually negative one half r because it's also on the other side of the uh, mirror. Oh, well, that's just for one. Don't worry about the negative. It's half the distance. Um, so that means if you've got a spherical mirror like we were playing around with, we if we knew how big of a sphere that came out of, we could very quickly figure out what the focal length is. We could experimentally do that as we did by focusing something. Let's take the place case of a plane mirror, though. What's the radius of curvature of something that is planar? Infinity. Infinity. It's infinitely far. So it'd be it'd be a small part of a circle infinitely big in order to be flat. So for this case, the focal length of a plane mirror is in effect infinity. So let's look at what that does to our formula. That means this term is always zero for a plane mirror, which also means that 1 over the object distance is equal to negative 1 over the image distance, or therefore the object distance must be negative 1 times the image distance, or vice versa. What does that mean for the image? Where is the image formed? from a plane mirror. Behind it, and how far behind it? The same distance as the object in front of it. So we kind of instinctively know that since we use those all the time, but this applies to it. This, by the way, also applies, we, we looked at concave mirrors yesterday, we can apply it very quickly to plane mirrors. It also works for convex mirrors. So curved the other way when you're looking at it this way. We notice that those, when we were experimenting with, our image always became smaller and 
it always was a virtual image. We couldn't project it anywhere. So convex mirrors, because of their shape, and we'll draw these out on the next slide, the focal length is always less than zero. It's a negative focal length. And so what you get up there is 1 over f equal to 1 over di plus 1 over do. Um, rearranging that, the 1 over the focal length minus 1 over object distance equal to 1 over image distance. This is always a negative number. Which means this is always a negative number and therefore always virtual behind the mirror. We will practice with those uh, on our next homework assignment. And then we also I also had you look two different ways, as it turns out only one of them correct, at magnification. Mistakes happen sometimes. Um, and if we want to look at how big things are, we also can see that, so here, here's a really important formula. And it applies to any of the mirrors that we're looking at. And then the second important formula has to do with magnification. How big or small relative to the object is the image? Um, this is, you can, and you can write it either way, it's always a negative hi over hl. The negative means that it's inverted. So when you work this out, if you know the height of your object and it comes up with a negative image height, that means it's also flipped upside down. If it comes up as positive, it's still upright. So those are two uh, upright if positive. Those are two options there. And then other interesting parts about this is, oh, and this is sometimes abbreviated as a capital M. If M is greater than one, image is larger than the uh, object. So you get actual real magnification. Because, yeah, so that occurs when HI is greater than HO. And if M is less than 1, the image is smaller, E magnification. But we can see how big this is going to be regardless of what we look at. These, by the way, um, we'll find both of these formulas don't only apply to the mirrors that we're talking about, we can actually apply them very, very similarly, same formulas to the lenses, too, with only a little bit of changing for them. So we, we are a little bit slimmed down on formulas this chapter. Mm -hmm. so the negative sign is part of the formula. Negative sign is part of the formula. If, when you're solving for this, HI ends up being negative, it's flipped upside down. If it ends up being positive, it's upright. But these could, uh, the object distance will always be positive, but the image distance could be negative if it's behind the mirror. Let's see why, what, at least in one physical representation, why this stuff happens. So that's, that's what the second slide, third slide, yeah, this slide is for. Um, so this is meant to represent a concave mirror. This is the, oh, that is way too big. The focal length, I put it at, I did it the wrong way here. 
um, is at twice the, or the radius, and it should be at should be way inside. So I'm going to move this focal length back to the radius and then eyeball it, or back to the center of my circle and then eyeball it to most of the way over. So let's do this. Okay, here is about half, and so I want it about there. That will be my focal length. This is paused. I'm going to go to the other one as well. And in this case, the accuracy of your drawing, including the curvature of this, really determines how accurately you can predict where these, where the images are going to form. If your drawing's not very accurate, your um, your image distance won't be very accurate, and the math will work out much better. But in some cases, this can be used really, really well and matches up very, very well with our, uh, with our calculated value that we have with our, our mirror formula. So let's take a case here where the object distance is quite a bit bigger than the focal length. So I'm going to take and draw an object out here, which is usually represented by an arrow. Thicker there. I'm going to have that going straight up from my uh, from my axis there, and we're going to draw out some lines, some rays, uh, and get the rules that you can apply to any of these mirrors. Okay, we want to draw. We can draw three rays for this. Um, the first one is a parallel ray, a uh, parallel to this optical axis is what it's called. Okay, and so that'll look like so. Draw it in parallel. Now we could draw a normal line to this, measure the angle carefully, measure the angle down from the normal line, and um, trace it out. But because of the curvature and the geometry of this situation, we're going to simplify this. A parallel ray to the optic axis uh, reflects so that it goes through the focal point. So I can do this with that ray. So parallel to optic axis reflects through focus. FP for focal point. The okay, second one that we can do goes to the optic axis on the uh, no, let's do a different one, because that one's the hardest one to draw. Um, oh, no, you keep it there, because it will come back to it. Um, I just know that for my own sketching here, I'll be able to draw it much more accurately after I draw this one. Second one I would do is a ray through the focal point. This one is just the opposite of the first one. It reflects parallel to the optical axis. So I take that. And it reflects like that. And then the third ray we can draw I will do in green. We're going to take and put right to the center 
of the mirror along the optical axis. That one we can probably predict where it's going, for a couple different reasons, where it's going to reflect. The optical axis is parallel, or perpendicular to the mirror at that point. So this angle that it is above is going to be the same angle as it is below. It's, it's our normal reflection one, and it's easier to draw. And I also know that it's going to go through the same point. So I can, that's why I wanted to hold it off, because it's easy to, for me to draw here. Um, but this angle, this green angle, if we call that theta, then that one is also theta. So the, the third ray is a ray to this two that hits the mirror on the optical axis is reflected at the same angle. If you had to wager, where would you expect an image to be formed here? Where do you think that the... So I've traced three rays from just one little part of my object out here. Where is that image of that little part going to form? Not at the focal point. At the intersection of those reflected rays. So these are actually reflecting, because it's a mirror, and they are intersecting somewhere in real space. That means we could project this, and this point of my object would be imaged right there. And if I went down here, I'd find a similar thing, except with the difference that it would be getting closer and closer to the optical axis, until if I looked at this ball right on the bottom, it would just reflect straight back. And so what I get is an image that looks like that. So really all I have to do by lining up the bottom of my object with the optic axis is just find, figure out where is the other side going to be. And then the rest of it's just going to be fill in the, in the, the rest of that area. These three rules are going to be applied for every sketch that you do, every ray trace that you do for mirrors. So we're going to try another one in a sec after this is sunken in and if anyone has questions, they can ask. What can we say about this image? Is it larger or smaller than the object? It's demagnified. So we can say that the magnification is less than one. It's smaller. Is it real or virtual? Real. How do you know? Because they intersect on this side, on the real side of the mirror. Yep. Is it upright or inverted? Inverted. How do you know? Because it's upside down, right? Those three things are something we'll be looking at with almost every image we form to see. Um, now you can, if you do this accurately, you can measure all of these parts to say, based on how far away is it, the object distance, what will the image distance be? We can measure that with a ruler. Um, we can measure the magnification by taking the height here divided by the height here. And it should be even the absolute value of the magnification is zero. It's also negative. Okay. Are we okay to go on to the next one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Magnification is how big is this in comparison to the um, object. So magnification is always the image height over the object height. 
So if the image height is smaller, which we can probably see right away, then this is going to be a smaller number over a larger number, and that will be uh, less than 1. It's also negative in this case because the height of this hi is actually a negative value measured from our axis. So this would end up being negative 0.2 or so, it looks like. Sometimes we'll see where it's enlarged. But. Kayla, did you have a question? The green one? No. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. What, what pay? Oh, yeah, I see. Um, that's a really complicated one, isn't it? To draw out. You're, oh, I see what you, okay. Okay, so the other, thank you for bringing it up. The other way to look at this is um, the radius of curvature would be about here. And um, if, the other thing you can do is draw a line straight from your, the tip of your object through that. And let's see how good of a job I did on that. I will make it lavender. Right? And I don't know, I don't even have to reflect that one. But what I do need to know very accurately is where is the radius of curvature. So yes, it's perfectly acceptable to use. I don't end up using it. But I guess we can, we, we can do that one because it will also help define that point. Um, I did a pretty good job on defining my radius of curvature so it goes through the exact same point. But we don't really measure where it's reflected at all. So this would be kind of, I won't put a dot, I'll put a D. Draw a line from the object through the radius of curvature. Sometimes this will hit the mirror and sometimes it won't. Um, and actually it will always get to the image before hitting the mirror. Make a note in there that you will not be reflecting it. No reflection. But that's sort of an extra one they don't make this done instead. Um, typically, I will actually just use two of these. The two easiest ones for me are the parallel one that goes through the focal length and the one that goes through the focal point and then reflects parallel. That's enough to define that point where those two intersect. And all the other ones should intersect at the same part but they're harder to measure and sketch out. Okay, that's good questions. Anyone, anybody else? Okay, let's set this up for another one. In this case, I'm going to move my object inside the focal length. So I'm going to take a moment to erase all of my extra lines and I'm going to move my object inside the focal length. Um, probably just leave the rest of it as is. Okay, for this image we're going to do a couple of things. One, um, this is going to be where the focal length is greater than the object distance. And um, I, I know through experience, experience that I want to actually move this over to give me some more room on the right. And so that's the part I forgot to mention right off the bat. But otherwise, we are going to apply the exact same rules. Let's see how. First one I'm going to do is a ray parallel to the optical axis that reflects through the focal point. Well, if I draw a ray, and this is going to be challenging with such a small scale, um, if I draw a ray there that's parallel to the uh, optical axis, it reflects back through the focal point. Okay, there's one. Number two, a ray through the focal point reflects parallel to the axis. Hmm. That's a challenging one, right? Yeah. 
Well, um, let's see. Uh, maybe, let's see if this matches with what you're thinking. Um, it's a ray through the focal point. Well, that's from here to here. Get more curves. Oh dear. What, 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 are you, what are you doing? Go that way. Go that way, yeah, we're going to. Um, what we're gonna find is that, and then if we have our third one here, um, if we do it green, this goes down here. I'm going to eyeball this. It would be better for me to measure that and then do it down um, about like that. What we see is that these don't, unfortunately, actually um, all intersect anywhere. They don't. But what that means is that they aren't going to intersect in real space. So as Kayla had just suggested, um, what we are instead going to do is trace them back. Uh, I'll make these dashed lines to indicate that these are, this is not really where the light is going. This is us tracing it back. So I'm going to trace one, oops, I wanted that red. Um, trace one, our, my one through the focal length back to the mirror. And if I, it's going through the focal length, where does it reflect to? How does it reflect? It reflects parallel. So again, this is a virtual ray, but back out like that. This one isn't, this green one's going to turn out terrible. That's okay. I'll just do this. Um, the black one, we're going to edge, or take back behind this as well. And here's where you're seeing the part of the weakness of this um, way of drawing, because now if I, re if I take my green one, back, I should also meet at the same point. But I didn't, I was not careful measuring. I was not careful measuring. Um, yeah, somewhere around there it's an issue. Yeah, I'm actually, yeah, somewhere in between these two points. Um, generally speaking, if you're careful measuring, you're going to be good. But in my experience, measuring out the curvature of this mirror is really, really tough. This is a much larger curve than the ones we were using yesterday. And so that makes it tougher. Um, but we're going to have a, our image somewhere back here, where these should all come together. So like I, I say, so we're right here at that point. <laughs> yes. Yes. Perfect. If yeah. this were a flatter mirror like the ones we were using, this would be a, this would come out a lot easier. Very hard for us to draw on this side, but we can still tell a lot about it. Um, namely, is this a real or a virtual image? Virtual. Virtual. It's we we get it by extending the rays backwards. Yeah. <laughs> In some manner. It be, you know, and honestly, it, it usually doesn't turn out that bad. This is exceptional. Um, but is this, what's the magnif, what can we say about magnification? It's bigger, so that means greater than one. Is it positive or negative? Because it's upright. And that tells us the last thing, that it's also upright. This is when you brought the mirror in very close to your eye, and your eye got giant. It was a good time. You saw it upright, and it was really, really big. The closer you get into the mirror, the bigger this is, because the farther out this looks. So it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. was right. Um, well, and I, I actually made it specifically that it's bigger than plus one. So this is positive, too, and that's what 
makes it upright. The other one I just made just to show that it was smaller, and then the negative part shows that it's also inverted. <laughs> Did yours turn out better than mine? A little bit? Okay. Um, we are unfortunately running out of time, so I will just highlight this. Um, we use the exact same thing with this for um, a convex mirror. Um, and if I draw very quickly a an object out here, this will be on the video so you can kind of go back and look at it. Uh, here's my object. Whoa, that's big. That's, that was bigger than anything. Okay, yeah, it's going to ring. Um, I'm going to trace these out real quick. Parallel goes back. Uh, and reflects away now from the focal point, right? So this ray goes in like so. One that hits the axis reflects at the same angle, and we're going to trace it backwards. And one that is designed to go through the focal point reflects positive. And so that one turned out pretty good. Okay, so I, I accidentally stopped recording through part of that, so I want to go through a couple of, just real quickly, a couple of the um, situations that we talked about that may have been clipped off. One of those is still a concave mirror. If the object is inside the focal length, we're going to apply the rules just like we did before, but it's going to be done slightly differently because of where the image forms. So we've got our object here. My red line is one that goes through the focal line, focal point. Um, my black one, line here goes parallel to the optical axis and as usual gets uh, reflected back through the focal point. And then my green line goes to the center and reflects off there. But the problem with this, and this drawing isn't perfect because the mirror is so curved, it makes it very tough. Um, the problem is these won't actually intersect at any point. So uh, what we find is that we actually have to trace them, sort of like what we did with the plane mirror, back behind the uh, mirror. And so you extend, you find where it would reflect, and you extend that backwards. And that's where it's going to uh, actually go and form an image. Because of the curvature, and I didn't do a great job on this one, these didn't meet at one point. They should. And that tells us about where the image is. So this image, being behind the mirror, is virtual. It is going to be larger than the object, so the magnification is greater than one, and since it's pointing upwards, it is upright. And then the other one that we very quickly looked at at the end of class was a convex mirror. <coughs> convex mirror, we apply the same rules, but again, a little differently. Here's my object. Here is my focal point now. Um, I take a parallel ray and it bounces away from my focal point that way. So I actually drew a line up like that and then extended it back. The reflected ray went back. Um, for one going through the focal point, I drew a line straight towards my focal point, but of course it's going to hit the mirror there and reflect. And a ray through a focal point reflects parallel to the optical axis. So it actually reflects straight out here. And I extended it back. And then my third one, the green one, went straight to the center of the mirror and then reflected off at the same angle. This one you can see really well that the green, red, and black rays are never going to meet in real space, meaning that this must be a virtual image. So I extended each of the reflected rays backwards and where they intersect, and this one I did a pretty good job on, is um, where the image is formed, right there. So it is upright, it's pointing in the same direction, but its magnification is small, it's less than one, because it's, the image is so small. And of course it's a virtual image because it's back behind the mirror where no light rays actually are.